Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we shoot Ectochrome 100 in medium format. So I'd recently stopped at my local camera shop and they had just gotten in the new Ectochrome 100 in 120. I figured I'd buy some. I bought like three rolls to shoot through the Mamiya 645. I wanted to mostly just experiment with it and kind of see how uh, color renders out. I'd shot in some Ektachrome on the Contax T2, but obviously had never shot it on medium format. So I figured what better way to kind of experiment this than to just uh, get out there and shoot some snowy landscapes and see what we find. So all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with how the roll came out. I think there's three shots specifically that came out really nice. Like I said before, there was no real intention with any of the photos other than just wandering and coming across interesting scenes. Okay, so the first photo that I really liked was actually the first photo that I took. Colin and I were just driving around our hometown, actually getting ready to leave and came across this building. It's an old Chinese restaurant that I've seen probably a hundred times. But I think with the snow kind of covering the parking lot and the car next to it, it makes for an interesting image. The next photo that I really liked was actually a backyard. We were driving through neighborhoods just kind of seeing what would catch our eye. And I came across this backyard that was like entirely blue. The house in the shed had this matching light baby blue color. While the truck has a more saturated, darker, still baby blue color. And I drove past the composition just like this and thought it was interesting. So I stopped, jumped out, and took two shots. The first one ended up a lot better than the second, in my opinion. All right, the last shot I liked was the snowed-in Chevy. Kind of the same situation as the last one. We were just driving around, and I noticed this snow pile pushed up against the Chevy. I quick turned around, parked the car, and took a couple shots. My favorite is the widest of all of them, but I think they're all interesting too. I think why I like it so much specifically is it looks like it could be anywhere in the world. It almost looks like it could be Antarctic, and just looks kind of, uh, I guess, crazy overall. Okay, so giving some final thoughts on Ektachrome 100. I think slide film is really interesting to play around with as it gives uh, a super clean look to it. I think compared even to professional color negative film, it'd be tough to find anything that renders an image as sharp. But that being said, I don't know if the almost inconvenience of E6 slide processing is worth it. Obviously before we were using film digitally, slide film had more of a use in that you could share your images with friends physically through a projector or prints or whatnot. With the availability of C41 developer and that being primarily used for you know most of the film stocks today, I don't know if the inconvenience of the E6 slide film justifies the marginal amount of sharpness you get. And maybe on a larger format camera, like a six x seven camera, it would be more noticeable versus the 645. But just based off these kind of test shots, it seems, uh, like I said, marginally sharper than, let's say, Portra. So I guess ultimately then based on price and convenience, I don't know if I would make uh, Ektachrome 100 something I shoot on a regular basis. But I think it's something that's interesting to experiment with. I think sticking to one film stock is obviously very safe and renders you results that you understand. But what's the fun in that? Why not try different film stocks, uh, especially for different 
uh, scenarios and see how it goes. Especially with E100, I feel like shooting, you know, more snowy portraits uh, is kind of in the wheelhouse or strengths of the film stock. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. This one was super fun to film. I was eager to get my hands on the Ektachrome 100 in medium format to kind of see how the sharpness would render out. I guess in comparison to the 35 millimeter, I had noticed more of a sharpness difference compared to like, let's say Portra again. Ultimately, I think it's really exciting to see Kodak and other companies like them uh, pushing new products in today's market. All right, so that's gonna do it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the photos. And I think that's it. That's my spiel. Yeah, peace out.